survived. We're calling the Miner Site Plan and Subdivision See Committee of the Township of Persephone Troy Hills together. Uh, announcement is made that adequate notice of this meeting has been given and that it is being conducted in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4 6 at SEC of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act. If you could call the roll, please. Ms. The Mr. Apparelli. Here. Ms. Hernandez. Here. Mr. Mealy. Here. Ms. Veely. Here. Chairman Dinsmore. Here. We also have Mrs. Ms. Favate. Here. Mr. Carlson. Here. And Mr. Cangiano. Here. Okay, if we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Stop. Stop. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We have one item on the agenda tonight, and that is uh, application number 20, colon 501, Allison Perez, 115 Hamburg Road, block 239, Lots, lot four, minor subdivision. If you could uh, please come up. Harris, please. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Todd Finchler of Decker and Finchler for City, representing Allison Perez. Her husband, the builder, is. I guess sitting in the same chair as she is. Maybe <laughs> first. All right, so what are you coming before us here tonight for? Um, we're here for really, should I swear you're, 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 uh, if they're going to, I'll swear to them both together. Uh, yes, <laughs> we're coming here. No, they want to swear. I just want to okay. swear you both, that way we don't got to Oh, you want to swear in? Okay. Raise your right hands, please. You swear the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, yeah. we do. Okay. Members of the board, we're here for a minor subdivision um, for 115 Hamburg Road in Parsippany. All right. Do you have some testimony that uh, would make our job easier to determine the appropriate action? Sure. I'd like to call Carlos Perez, uh, the husband of the applicant of the builder. If I might. Uh, Mr. Perez, could you um, describe the project, the proposed development, what uh, is being proposed? Uh, we're, we'd like to, you know, uh, subdivide the lot in, into two pieces. One is uh, 80 by 100, and the other piece is 60 by 100. And like to build two new homes. All right. Ms. Favate, are there certain items that we need to? Uh, sure, Mr. Chairman. Um, we, had re we had recommended a waiver on the DEP uh, requirement. There's no, uh, there are no wetlands on the property. Uh, we also recommended a waiver on the scale of the map um, because of the minor nature. There's enough detail, despite the, it not being drawn to scale, uh, there's enough detail for the board to understand really what was happening, hopefully. Um, location of natural features. There are really uh, none on site. It's fully developed with a, an existing home. So those are the three waivers. Um, other items we suggested would be addressed in testimony. Um, for example, um, you know, some of the some of the zoning compliance, um, question of grading, utilities and drainage, um, and landscaping and sort of uh, construction details. All we suggested could be addressed in testimony. Sure. I'll, I'll go through the items on the checklist. Just, just a moment. Do I hear? A motion uh, appro to approve the waivers recommended by our planner. Um, motion to accept. Second. All right. Uh, can we do this by a roll? Yes. We can do this by voice vote. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we move along. All right. Now you have the uh, letter from Ms. Favate in front of you, and you can address the different items that require testimony. I will, sir. Thank you. Um, Mr. Perez, I'd like to go through some items on the checklist here. Um, are you aware of any wetlands or, or oh, no, 
Yes, that's right here, including wetlands. Are you aware of any restrictions that would prevent the property from being built upon, including natural features, woodland streams, wetlands, flood hazard, any, any of those items? I'm not aware of any of those items. The, um, can you discuss the lot widths? Have they, have they been corrected? Yes. Are you aware, is there going to be any regrading of the property as part of the construction process? They, there's always uh, regrading to the, you know, when you do a new project. And I, the engineer has everything, uh, the proposal and, and uh, you know, this, the, the existing grades and the proposed grades, which I have, you know, it was handed into the board. Would you speak up, please? Thank you. If I could actually go back to the question on the lot widths, um, there was a question of, of whether the numbers on the plans or the zoning table were correct. So whichever is correct, I just wanted to get clarification. The lot width. Yeah, the lot width was always the one lot is. Uh, 81 feet by 100 feet deep. The other line is 60 feet by 100 feet. And that would be uh, number 109 Hamburg on the paper. That's the 60 by 100. And the one that's 99 Hamburg is uh, 80 by 100. Okay, so what's actually on the plan is correct because the table says proposed lot 402, the width would be 79.07. Whereas, whereas on the plan, I believe that lot is 81.1, excuse me, 81.4. Yeah, okay. And, and also the columns on the zoning table look like they're, they're flipped. So uh, when, whenever we get to a final plan, that should be corrected. I, I didn't think so. I, I thought what was drawn was probably correct, but just take a look at the zoning table. Right, but first from the beginning, we'll tell us what is on the drawing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Prez, uh, utility connections, do you foresee any issue uh, with uh, utility connections? Okay. Um, drainage, are there plans for drainage? Have you submitted uh, part of the plans? Okay. Everything drained to the storm drains. Everything is connected on the ground. Okay. I just wanted to comment. This application is for a minor sub. The, the correct process would be when the full grading plan and house plan uh, is submitted to be submitted to the engineering township engineer for review. Um, that's outside of my purview to be uh, uh, reviewing the lot grading plan. So there's a secondary step. Should you be uh, deemed uh, approved yeah. tonight, then you would have to submit right. your, your updated plans yeah. uh, for uh, for building permits and engineering review for grading and and, uh, right. and the like. Uh, Mr. Perez, um, in the installation of uh, fences, uh, driveways, sidewalks, is that part of the plans as well? Yes. Okay. So that's all included? It's in the plot plan. Okay. Uh, landscaping, is there, has that been submitted yet or is that yes, late? That's, that's all in the plot plan. Okay. And uh, future driveway location, has that been submitted as well? Yes. Have you submitted something since to more recently since the plan I'm looking at, which is November 15th? 
I left you. Oh, oh, this is what's on my desk. It tonight. looks like what's submitted the 19th Got it. Sorry, of, uh, guys. this month. So Thought we haven't had a chance to right, review right, these yet. When I, when I got the, I got it. I got it. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't realize that was different than what I had. I'm looking at it now. And just for the record, it looks like on the latest plan, the zoning table has been corrected. No, so that, that explains some of the confusion. Thank you. Okay. What's the width of the driveways? The width of the proposed driveways? You have that handy? Okay. I, I think it just has to be 24 feet or less. Okay. So you would just be you'll be compliant. Okay. One's 14 and one's 21. Oh, all the details. I see it. you indicate whether there were any protective covenants or <coughs> deed restrictions that you're aware of? percentage deck percentage can only be four percent so I didn't see this plan until just now just to make sure that the deck isn't over the four percent okay well we're not approving the plans for the houses no, we're approving but I simply like them the know correct so that so that if he wanted that big deck he might want to make it a variance and get it you know and go to the versus waiting a couple months and coming to zoning and then on the back side it says oh by the way you can't have that deck that the board looked at do you know what I mean? So instead mm -hmm. of people think that when the board approved the plan, it, everything's good, but if they come to zoning and the deck is over 4%, then I tell them no. But if we were to have a C variance at this time, wouldn't we be moving yeah. it up to the full yeah. full board? So all we're approving at this point. No, I know. I just want to be yeah. able to tell them I mean, if, if so he knows. If the deck becomes a problem with zoning, I just... Make it smaller? Yes. Okay. We can work on that okay. later then. Okay. Okay. Counselor, is this your case? You, you uh, are trying to get us to approve a uh, subdivision that is two conforming lots being made out of one? That's correct, sir. That's correct, sir. Okay. Uh, are there any questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Perowick. <laughs> On the driveways, uh, uh, in the report here, it says that uh, the location of the proposed driveways is required to confirm appropriate site distance from the intersection. Uh, shouldn't we have that as a uh, an approval? 
Before we're you. only we're only approving the splitting of the lot. The engineering and the site plan will all be determined okay. by our professionals later when okay. they when they have the actual site plan in front of them. So this will come up again then. It may. Yeah, and just just to look at it, I mean, what they've presented, and, and Andrew could, could chime in as well. It, it looks like you could get a driveway far enough away. Yeah, I mean, it's um, a, the first lot. I think is the one that you'd be concerned about. Lot four hundred one. It's a corner lot, but right. they have it as far away from the corner as, as possible. Can. So yeah. okay, good enough. Thank you. No well, good point to raise. Any other questions by members of the Vincent? Do you have another? No, no, Mr. Chairman. Okay, our, our planner, Ms. Favate, do you have anything else that you need to? Uh... Um, I think that does it. Okay, Mr. Cangiano, do you have uh, any No other... comment, just that the, uh, the, the uh, comments, uh, the housekeeping comments on the survey, I haven't reviewed this Right. One that just came in yet. I don't know if it's addressed it yet, but if it didn't address it, we'll we'll re comment. Well, all we're giving them is the is the split in the property. Correct. Correct. So. I just had a few housekeeping items on on that uh, that the lot line had to be changed and, and just graphics it, uh, to to have it show a little bit clearer. And if just a few housekeeping items, but I'm satisfied that uh, there's no issues. It's just a matter of uh, the revised plan having a few more housekeeping items on it for, for uh, graphics. Mr. Uh, Carlson, yep. Mr. Carlson, do we have what we need here? For, yeah. uh, I, I, well, I actually have a, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question. That I'm just looking at the architectural elevations, and are, are these just um, sort of sample elevations? Okay, because the, they're for a different property, but I'm assuming they're in, yeah. they're yeah. in the architects. Yeah. Okay, because I guess one question I have on lot 401 is the driveway opens onto Hamburg. So, but the house faces Everett. So the, so the actual elevation will be a little bit different because the, you'd be coming in the driveway on the side, into the garage on the, from the side, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's fine. I'm, it's getting a little bit confused <laughs> looking at the, but it's fine. Okay. We're not approving the houses, as you said. Right. And I'm not approving Mr. the Mr. Carlson, you have anything <laughs> else to? No, I have nothing. Are there any members of the public who have uh, any questions or thoughts on this subject? Hearing and seeing none. Anything else from any members of the board? That is, I assume, your entire case, sir? It is, yes, sir. All right. Uh, wait, let me close the, <laughs> close the public portion of this. Uh, do I hear a motion to uh, approve the application as Mr. presented? Mr. Chairman, a motion to approve the application of Allison Perez, 115 Hamburg Road, Block 239, Lot 4, application number 20, colon 501, minor subdivision. Second. If you would call the roll, please, Ron. Mr. Aparelli. Yes. Ms. Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Mealy. Yes. Ms. Veely. Yes. Chairman Dinsmore. Yes. And the result is the granting of the subdivision and I guess uh, we'll go through the usual bureaucratic requirements and when you finally want to submit the plans for the actual site you have to go through the normal routines of that too. Thank you very much. Council, please make sure I see the subdivision deed before it is recorded. I will. Thank you. <coughs> Members of the board, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Is there anything else to come before this board at any time? Any members of the public that have something that they need to bring before the minor site plan? Because I didn't ask that before. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing and seeing none, a motion to adjourn is in order. Okay. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. We took a few minutes longer than you might have expected. <laughs> the Township of Parsippany Planning Board. Today is Monday, February 24th, 2020, 7.30 p.m. Uh, the announcement of this meeting has been made with adequate notice and is given that being conducted in accordance with NJSA 
10 colon 4-6 at SEC of the New Jersey State Open Public Meetings Act. Nora, would you please do the roll? Mr. Perowick. Here. Councilman DiPiero. Here. Mr. Dinsmore. Here. Mr. Pergieri. Here. Ms. Hernandez. Here. Mr. Mendel. Here. Mr. Mealy. Here. Mr. Patel. Here. Ms. Veely. Here. Chairman Von Aiken. Here. We also have present tonight our board planner, Ms. Favate. Here. Our board attorney, Mr. Carlson. Here. And our board engineer, Mr. Candiano. Here. Would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, looks like we had some minutes from our past meetings that need approval. Uh, should we go through these one by one or can we have them approved uh, together? Uh, That's a lot. The problem <laughs> is only those, those present can vote on mm -hmm. them. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to do them one by one, Nora? Probably, unless there's a particular, any of them that someone does not want to approve them. Let's do it kind of backwards. <laughs> I suppose so, yeah. Are there any? Does anyone have any comments on the minutes, or are there any that you'd like taken off a consent agenda? No. I guess we can. I guess we can vote them on consent. I'll note, however, we skip the resolution for water view investors. We'll do that in, uh, at our next meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so I, I guess the way we would do that is: uh, Do we have a motion to um, approve, the minutes, approve the minutes, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Our motion to approve the minutes of the following meetings, August 19th, September 9th, September 23rd, October 7th, October 21st, November 4th, and November 18th, all in 2019. I believe the last one was November 29th. Oh, I'm sorry. It says 18th on here. Yeah. Hmm. Corrected. This one says 29th. Okay. Which is correct. 27th. <laughs> I don't have my okay. with me. Do we have the correct date then? Just I don't, I don't have the 18th. 18th yeah. Okay. All right. Do we have a second I'll, of that motion? I'll second, Hernandez. Please call the roll. Mr. Perowick. Yes. Councilman Di Piero. Abstain on October 7th. Yes on all the rest. Mr. Dinsmore. Uh, abstain on the tw September 23rd and uh, November 4th, but uh, yes on the rest. Mr. Frigieri. Yes. Ms. Hernandez. I abstain on August 19th, 2019, and yes for the rest. Mr. Mendel. Abstain on October 21, yes on the rest. Mr. Mealy. Yes on all of them. Mr. Patel. Yes. Ms. Veely. Yes, except for September 9th, October 7th, and November 4th. Chairman Van Aken. Yes, staying on October 7th and November 4th. Very good. <laughs> All right. Uh, first item on the agenda, application number 19, colon 518, Federal Realty, uh, 1123, Route 46, Block 729, Lot 7. Amended preliminary and final major site plan with C variants. Yes, sir? Yeah, yes, I've never used it myself. Yeah, we'll lower the, lights. the lights might be washing it out. Yeah, I think it's it's turning on right now. Yeah, that's yeah. good. It takes a few moments to wall up.
<laughs> that was sick. We not using that? Put all the lights back on. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I it said it wasn't connected, even though it seems to be. So I have hard copies. I can okay. I can hand back to the board. Okay. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, members of the board. Uh, my name is Luke Pontier of the law firm Day Pitney. I'm here on behalf of Oops. the applicant, Federal Excuse Realty. Me. My, uh, I've recently utilized Dave Pit Pitney, and my daughter, my daughter-in-law, works for Dave Pitney. So see. <laughs> I'm going to go off here and play with my smartphone. <laughs> we'll see you in a few minutes. Yep. I'm here on behalf of Federal Realty Investment Trust tonight. The applicant is the owner of property located at 1123 Route 46 which is designated on the township tax map as block 729, lot seven, and the property is commonly referred to as the Troy Hills Shopping Center. <coughs> the property is approximately 19.8 acres and is located in the B1 zoning district where shopping centers are a conditional use. Tonight, the applicant is seeking amended preliminary and final site plan approval along with bulk variance relief to install additional signage within the shopping center. The applicant has received several approvals from this board uh, over the past few years, most recently being a minor site plan approval uh, on March 26th of 2018 to perform facade renovations, uh, which if you've been by the property lately have been completed. The applicant is now proposing additional signage on the property to finalize the rehabilitation of the shopping center and, and the signage proposed includes a total of 12 under canopy hanging signs, one for each of the existing building tenants, eight graphic wall panel signs along the north and east building facades, which is uh, along the existing Michaels store, and one internally lit <coughs> welcome wall sign on the northeastern corner of the building, also on, uh, on the existing Michaels facade. Uh, before I get into the meat of the application and the variances being sought tonight, uh, the applicant did have several waiver requests. I'm not sure if the, the board planner would like to go through those uh, before we get into it. Sure. Go ahead. Sure. There were a number of um, either requested or we recommend waivers um, for this application given that there's a, no actual new construction proposed. There's no, um, there's no changes to the buildings themselves. Um, so the first, first first waiver is a DEP letter of interpretation on wetlands. There are no DEP regulated wetlands uh, on the property, so we recommended that waiver. Um, the applicant had asked for a waiver on the key map um, because of the minor nature of the application, and, and there's really no disturbance or minimal disturbance proposed. We concurred and recommended that waiver. Um, then there's a series of waivers that are um, checklist items that are related to actual construction. Um, or, or site work. So there's easements, natural features, topographic contours, spot elevations, floor plans, utilities, and storm drainage. None of those are proposed to change. So we recommended all of those waivers. And similarly, um, there are checklist items on landscaping and solid waste uh, containers, the usage of non-residential buildings, um, construction, uh, and then a traffic study or environmental in assessment study. Um, none of those are necessary in this case uh, because of the, the nature of the application and you all just saw them uh, a couple years ago um, where you saw all that information. Um, and then the final set of waivers um, are relate to the, uh, the fact that it's a final, it's a requested final and preliminary um, site plan and subdivision application or site plan application. Um, as you, we typically see here, most applicants request for the same, you know, the preliminary and final to be done at the same time. So you don't need the additional conditions uh, of the final major site plan. So we recommended those waivers as well. 
Um, and, and then there's a series of waivers on the C variance application, which I've already gone through. They're repetitive from the other checklist. So uh, in short, because there's no, pr no proposed construction on the building them buildings themselves, building itself, um, we recommend all of those waivers. All right. Thank you. Uh, any comments or concerns from the board about the recommended waivers? <coughs> then I'll accept the motion uh, to accept the waivers. <coughs> motion to accept. All right. Mr. Parway, second? Second, second Mandel. All right. Second Mandel. Nor, can you call the roll? Favor. All in favor. <laughs> okay. Voice vote, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, very good. That sounds like everybody. <laughs> you should still, you should still say opposed. Thank you. Okay. Oh, very good. Right, uh, waivers you. are accepted. Great, thank you. As part of this amended site plan application, the applicant is requesting the following variances from the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills Code, section 430-287A. That is a variance to permit building signs on side walls, where building signs are permitted only on the front wall. A, a variance to permit a sign, a wall sign, totaling approximately 209 square feet, and that's for the welcome sign, as a maximum sign area of 150 square feet is permitted. A variance for the number of building signs to permit one additional building sign for each tenant, plus the welcome sign and graphic panel signs as only one building sign is permitted per tenant. And finally, a variance to permit hanging signs as such signs are, are not permitted within the B1 district. Uh, we did receive two review memorandums as part of this application, one from the board planner, which is dated December 17th, 2019, and one from the board engineer, which is dated January 27th of 2020. With me tonight, I have two witnesses, uh, Andrew Bataro, who is a representative of the property owner and applicant, and Tim Olson, who is a representative from the sign company. Uh, and without further ado, uh, I will introduce Andrew Bataro. You raise your right hand, please. Do you swear the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Would you state and spell your name for the record, please? Andrew Bataro, D-O-T-T-A-R-O. Thank you. And can you please state the name and address of your employer? Yeah, and can you just go through your experience, please, uh, both with the company uh, and in development of shopping centers? My undergraduate degree is in Lansing. Excuse me, if you just speak up. My graduate degree is in is finance. Uh, I've worked in the development industry for 30 plus years. I've been with Federal for maybe uh, three and a half, four years. Uh, we started the project up here at, uh, in, in Parsippany maybe two years ago, and we're here to really just sort of you know, finish it off uh, and, and, uh, and make it look the way we really want it to look. Great, uh, and now I'm gonna introduce as exhibit A1 uh, an aerial photograph of the, the site. <coughs> and I'll hold uh, a minute for everyone to get a copy in front of them. And Mr. Bataro, can you please describe uh, the location of the property for the board? Certainly. I, I would imagine everyone's like, fairly familiar. It's on 46 at South Beverwick. Uh, at one end of the uh, property is Michael's. At the other end of the property is Target. Um, uh, it currently has two pylon signs, one out on 46 at the uh, basically the sort of the center line of the property line along 46. has another pylon <coughs> sign on South Beverwick that is parallel to South Beverly. It is pretty much 
much surrounded by commercial space. There are retail centers across the street. Uh, I-80 parallels the back of the center. And across South Beverwick is Park and Ride. So um, that's sort of the context of the shopping center itself. Um, you've all probably seen how we've renovated it over the last few years. And um, you know, with our tenants, we are, we're here to ask for some you know, additional signage uh, for identification um, when we get into the various uh, in In one second. Uh, and so just to confirm one last thing about the location of the property and, and looking at the aerial, are there any residential uses directly adjacent to the site? Uh, now I'd like to introduce Exhibit A2. Uh, each of you do, do have a copy of this in your package. It is the leasing plan, which is it lists all of the tenants on the site, uh, as well as highlights where the signage is proposed. And Mr. Vitaro, can you please describe the, the proposed signage? There are three types of signage. First one, there are 12 uh, panel signs. Are basically, I'm going to call them under canopy signs. We use them in pretty much all of our um, strip shops. Inside. They are perpendicular to the storefront of each tenant. Uh, yet the second sign is on the South Beverwick entrance. There is a blank wall on the side of the Michaels. Um, and there's really, when you come in off the South Beverwick, Beverwick, there really is no identification as to what you're arriving to. Uh, so that's the second sign, which basically says, welcome to Troy Hill Shopping Center. Uh, and then the third sign, which in my mind is really just graphics. There, as you come off of South Beverwick and you come into the shopping center and you sort of bear a right to come around to the front of Michaels, there are just huge blank walls. So what we're proposing, I think, are eight or 10 eight graphic panels that would be on these blank EFIS concrete walls that would really, there really, there's no, um, there's no text. They're just graphics to just be more aesthetically pleasing and to um, complement the balance of the architecture that we've done throughout the balance of the center. Uh, and so let's, we'll go through each of the, the types of proposed signs as you just described, uh, starting with the hanging under canopy signs. Can you please describe for the board the purpose of those signs? Well, there really are um, two purposes and another reason. One is we do them at most of our retail centers because it's, uh, it's something that the tenants like to have. Uh, but the two main reasons are when someone walks out of, let's just take um, Smashburger for an example, and they want to go to another tenant. Once they're in the canopy area, in the sidewalk, which is protected from vehicular traffic, they can look straight down the sidewalk and they can see where the other tenants are. It's almost exactly what you have out here in your hallway where you look down the hallway and you can see which room is which by the various little blade signs that you have. It basically is the exact same function. And what it also does in a retail environment, it keeps people from having to walk out into the parking lot to see, oh, where is Sports Clips? Where is Chipotle? Um, so it keeps people in a safe zone they don't have to walk out into the drive aisle to be able to understand where the next tenant is. Um, and, and so just to confirm, there's there's nothing currently that would enable a customer walking under the canopy to identify the store that's three stores down? Nothing at all. Okay, so, so this would help for uh, identification purposes as well as, you said, the, the kind of the free flow of traffic throughout the parking lot. Uh, and now moving on to the welcome sign, can you please describe the purpose for that sign? Um, the purpose is that on South Pepperwick, when you come off of the you really, and you look to the left, you really can't tell that it's a retail center. You can tell it's a retail center, but you don't know really what it is. Uh, we're not really asking, we're not asking to put tenant names on there. We just want to identify the center itself. Um, Great. And, and would you also say that the sign is aesthetically pleasing? Oh, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> And uh, do you, would you say that it helps to, to tie the entire shopping center together? It ties everything together. All the, you know, all the architectural from Target all the way down through Michaels and around has all been tied together and, uh, and the architects and the graphic designers have put it as such. Uh, so they all do it's one clean aesthetic throughout. As well as the materials. We've added a lot of stone, a lot of wood, a lot of metal, a lot of steel. Uh, it, it was uh, it was very meticulous on the design for actors meshes over some of the smaller tenants, um, so that entire aesthetic follows the whole way down the 
and I and I believe you touched on it briefly in your introduction, but the monument sign that is on South Beverwick, that's located at the intersection of South Beverwick and Route 46, correct? Yes. Uh, and it's parallel to parallel South Beverwick? South Beverwick. So it, As opposed to perpendicular, which are typical pylons, like, like the one on Route 40, 46 is perpendicular, has two sides, you see it from either direction. So as you were saying, it's, it's difficult coming off of I-80 or down South Beverwick for, to identify the shopping center currently. Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, and, and moving on to the, the, the eight graphic panels uh, that you're proposing along the, the Michaels, can you please describe the purpose purpose of those signs? I, I think you touched on it briefly yeah, already. Yeah, it's really about the aesthetic. Uh, you know, we're one of the few companies, uh, publicly traded REIT, that actually has a, a head of design in our Rockville office. We take all of our properties and we renovate them very seriously on, on, on the aesthetic. <coughs> The actual sort of making place. So if you're like in front of Smashburg, you'll see that we created an area for outdoor seating. If you're in front of um, down from Chipotle, we've created these areas where you can actually sit. Uh, and these graphic panels really just sort of tie that architecture the whole way down uh, the entire facade of the retail center. Great. So we just look at it as you know, like the icing on the cake here to make this thing look the way we really want it to look. And uh, so kind of along those lines, would you say that the signage helps to create a unified design theme for the entire shopping center? <coughs> uh, I have no further questions for this witness, but I'd like to open to the board for questions. Any members of the board with questions? Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman? Yes. Uh, just to clarify, so if you are making the right-hand turn from South Beverwick Road, Headed south, or you know, uh, into the into the that driveway there. You're, I, I'm trying. And maybe it's just me, but you're not proposing to have anything there by the road that's substantial. That that's correct. Okay. Yeah, it's on the of, wall of my That's what I, I know. That's I didn't know if there. I missed something else because the, the visibility there is already difficult. There's cars that are creeping out <laughs> into into the southbound. Of, of South Beverwick Road as it is. So to have another sign, there would have been an issue. Okay, that, that's my question, thank you. So the monument side uh, sign will remain? Yes. Okay. And what about the Michael sign? Uh, is it gonna be part of this group? They would have, they have an under canopy sign. So they would have a, a sign right over there, front door basically. Okay. That is, These are for the smaller mm -hmm. tenants right. between Dollar Tree and Chipotle. Mm -hmm. It's for those, all the small tenants under that canopy. Okay. So the tenants are the house. Okay. Yeah, the larger, quote unquote, junior anchors going to Dollar Tree or Michaels uh, or Target, they have significant wall signage, so people really know where they are. It's okay. really for the smaller tenants. Okay, and it's not necessary for Michaels because it's part of the monument sign? Correct. Yeah, they're already on both. Uh, okay. Okay. Monuments, pylons, whatever you want to call them. Ms. Feely? Uh, what was the dimensions of the Welcome to Troy Hills, the, the large sign, length by width? So the, uh, the sign, the representative from the sign company will testify okay. as to all the dimensions for the signage. Okay. All right. Um, then are there any other questions for this witness? All right. Great. Thank you. Any Thank questions you. from the public for this witness? All right. You're excused. Sir, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Would you state and spell your name for the record, please? Timothy Olson, O L S E N. Okay. Yes. Uh, and Mr. Olson, can you please state the name and address of your employer for the record? I work for Foreman Sign Company, uh, 10447 Drummond Road, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, and your position with, with the employer? I am the employer? Vice President of Operations. Great. Uh, and is it accurate to say that uh, Foreman Signs uh, developed the sign package that's in front of the board today? That's correct. 
Uh, and can you describe your experience uh, with the company uh, and otherwise? I have been with the company for eight years. I have been in the sign industry for 29 years. Um, I handle day-to-day -day operations from start to finish. Great. Uh, and Mr. Botero previously went through each of the proposed signs and the types of signs that are, are being proposed tonight, but can you please go into a bit more detail and, and provide the dimensions for each of the signs for the sure. board? The uh, projecting signs that we're proposing will be 13 and 3 quarter inches tall by 30 inches, and the 30 inches is off the wall. We are, I don't have the, I would say they're probably 26 inches actual size, but we have the, the area where we have to attach them to the side. Um, you know, the gradient. Um, we will go through, but if, if you could also touch on uh, the height of the, the proposed hanging signs from the ground. From the ground, they will be eight feet to the bottom, um, so it's enough that it's out of, out of headway, but it's aesthetically not to the point Perfect. where you have to reach out by it. Great. Yeah, and then if you could flip to the uh, welcome sign and please describe the, the dimensions of that uh, and, the, and the total square footage of the sign as well. The total square footage is 209 square feet. Um, I'm not sure, and I should have caught this, I'm not sure if my designer put the overall height, but the overall length of the letters are 11 feet 5 inches. Um, that will go on a back, up, if you look on uh, this page here. Well, oh, I'm sorry. So this is in your package. We can call this exhibit A3. Uh, and this is the welcome to Troy Hills color rendering. For um, aesthetics, the black background will be the 209 square feet. The background does not illuminate. It just what would you have with channel letters is you have a lot of penetrations. Every letter will have maybe three to four penetrations into the building. From here, you would have one electric penetration, one electrical connection, and just maybe eight to 10 to hold the pan to the wall. So we wouldn't be, you know, Swiss cheesing part of my French to the wall. And, it, and when you have letters like that, it, it, again, it's aesthetically pleasing. It brings your eye to the sign. And, uh, that's more or less for daytime. You know, at night, obviously, it will be non-visible, and it gives a nice background for the letters to have the uh, info illumination. Okay, and can you describe the illumination a bit? Uh, and I know there was a concern from the board engineer on whether or not that would be shielded from, from outside yeah, of the what, property. what we do is a normal letter, like you see on most of the buildings, light through acrylic through the face. So if it's red, it lights red. These letters are fabricated out of aluminum, they will have a three inch return and they light backwards. So nothing will come through the front. We put, um, depending on, on townships, if, if people want brighter, we'll put a clear lens on the back. Um, for these letters, we would put a white lens so it acts as a diffuser. So it lets light through, but it's not to the point where it's overpowering bright. So you would get a nice eye pleasing glow, which makes the letters light or whatnot. Uh, and can you describe uh, briefly the process of the installation of the signs for the board? Um, the hanging signs, mm -hmm. we would just take a ladder, go up, and attach them to the facade. Done. This sign here, instead of taking pretty much a day to... Sorry, just when you say this sign here, oh, sorry. can you... Yeah. The uh, Troy Hills, welcome to Troy Hills sign. Um, what we would do is we would put up a mounting bracket put the pan on, attach it, and that's it. I, we would just tie the electric in and we would be in and out. And, and now turning to the eight graphic panels, can you please go through the dimensions of those? Yeah, I think I'm 
six, nine, seven, six. Yeah. nine foot, nine foot seven by fifteen foot six. Uh, and so each is approximately one hundred and forty eight point five square feet. Is Correct. that accurate? Uh, and can you briefly describe the installation process for those signs? Um, these would be a flexible material, so we would again put a frame to give it a little bit of dimension, and these would be stretched with a clip system that pulls it kind of like a canvas frame. That's more or less what you would be looking at. Uh, and there's, there's no lettering or logos proposed no for that sign, no correct? Just a graphic just panel. A graphic. And the, 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 the key is, you, you know, you could go and just paint the wall, but you want to just have a little bit of depth just so everything, like I said, it, it just gives a nice clean look and it gives it's, a ple it's pleasing to the eye. Great, thank you. Uh, and I have no further questions for this witness, but I'd like to open it up to the board for questions. All right. Uh, do our professionals have any questions for this witness? No, just, uh, well, I do have one question on the um, Welcome to Troy Hill sign. You had mentioned the overall square footage size of 209 for the whole panel, the black panel. Um, do you have a length and uh, height, height and width length on that? And it's just a little confusing on the color rendering. It appears that the that, that bottom swish or whatever graphic on the bottom that's uh, that's 137 inches, the the 11.5. Um, it appears to be that that appears to be the same width as your black um, panel in the background. But on the prior sheet, if you, if you looked at this one on the prior sheet, the footprint of that outline of that panel seems right. to be larger. So just if you can just clarify that. Right. So the reason that this shows the 137 is because if you are also looking at the, the uh, superimposed picture of, of the storefront, the, the swooshes stick past the hair. So we wanted to give you the total actual, if I told you it was 10 foot, but then the letter stuck over an extra two feet, then you would have, it, would, it wouldn't be the correct square footage. So we're going from point to point. Uh, of the uh, of the graphic, not not the pan. So the pan's actually a hair smaller width-wise than the graphic. And the total size, the graphic and the pan is 209. Yes. Thank you. Just to confirm on the graphic panels, I think you said each one would be about 156 square feet. 148. 48. Okay. So you wouldn't need variances on the size of those because that's just the that's correct. We need the, the variance for, for the size the of the quantity the, of yeah. the graphic panels, but not for the size. Yeah. And we do need one for the size of the welcome sign. And it looks like the the graphic panels would be blue, black, and gray, basically in color. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I haven't gotten that far into it. According to Sherwin Williams, at least. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And just for the board's reference, I, I'm actually familiar with the printed vinyl um, that I think is being proposed here, and it holds up very well. I would say better than paint on a wall. It doesn't chip away. I'm familiar with a community uh, in New York State, farther north of here, that has colder temperatures than you guys do, and they have a similar thing that's held up for four or five years. They haven't touched it. So it's a nice, nice touch. Um, on the hanging signs, what's the material on those? It looks like they're meant to emulate wood. They are digitally printed wood, so it's actually oh, it wood. not wood, but it'll it's look like wood. Wood-esque. Okay. So wood okay. Great. Do any of the uh, board members have questions for the witness at this time? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'm just Mr. wondering Perry. why Queen Pisa is different than the rest of the <laughs> side. <laughs> I, I, oh, the white background? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... The reason why is because Queen Pizza doesn't have good artwork that we can use right now. <laughs> okay. So this is like taking a picture. We just stole the logo off of the internet and slapped it on there. All right, thanks. Just so you would be able to see. But yeah, no, it would it would follow suit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good yeah. catch. Yeah. What? That's a good catch. <laughs> Any other board members? Any members of the public have a question for this witness? All right. Okay. Please proceed. Uh, and to briefly go through the engineer's review memorandum um, for comment two, 
uh, the applicant will agree if, if the application is approved tonight to provide a fully engineered uh, final site plan that will include sign the correct signature blocks and the, the zoning as well. Uh, and for comment three, the applicant will also agree to post a performance bond uh, and provide an as-built survey. I don't believe that there are any open questions uh, remaining on the engineer's review or the, the planner's review. Just to provide a, a quick sum of, of the testimony you heard tonight, uh, the applicant is proposing 12 hanging signs, one welcome wall sign, and eight graphic panel wall signs. The applicant is seeking variance relief from Section 430-287A of the Township Code, and those variances are to permit building signs on the side walls of the shopping center where they are permitted only on the front wall, to permit a building sign of approximately 209 square feet, and that's the welcome sign, uh, where a maximum of 150 square feet is permitted, to permit one additional building sign per tenant, as well as the welcome sign and the eight graphic panels where only one sign per business is permitted, uh, and to permit hanging signs within this district where they are otherwise not permitted. Uh, you heard testimony from the applicant and a representative of the sign company, and that testimony included that the proposed signage will be aesthetically pleasing, it will promote better traffic flow, it will help to unify the design theme, and it will enhance the existing shopping center which are all in furtherance of the purposes set forth in the municipal land use law, the zoning ordinance, and the township's master plan. You also heard testimony that the shopping center is in a business district. It is surrounded by major highways and other commercial and retail uses, and that makes it unlikely that there are, these improvements will cause a detriment to the surrounding properties. Uh, I open to the board for any, or the public for any additional questions, uh, and at this time the applicant, if there are no other questions, uh, would ask for an approval of the amended site plan and bulk variance. All right. Any questions or comments from the board at this time? All right. Seeing none, any questions or comments from the public? Okay. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion from the board. Oh, our okay. normal motion maker is <laughs> abstaining right now. <laughs> um, would somebody like to fill in? I'll so move. <laughs> to approve the application? To approve the application. I have no conditions um, aside from our general set of conditions, which include um, compliance with the engineer's review letter, which you stated you will do. So, subject to only our usual set of conditions. Your motion is to approve the application. If I That's understand. correct. All right. Second, okay. Parowick. Very good. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Yes. Are What's you your motion, sir? A motion to approve the the application number 19, colon 518, okay. for Federal Realty, 1123 Route 46, Block 729, Lot 7, amended preliminary and final major site plan with C variants. Okay. Um, I'm out of law. I should have closed the first motion first, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 th I think, I think, uh, I, I, I think we had the motion. I think Mr. Mule has further stated the motion well for us and clearly as to what, what it is we're voting on. So there you have it. I, I think that makes sense. We have a motion and a second. I think we need a vote. All right. Roll All right. call, please. For this young attorney has a heart attack. Over <laughs> Mr. Aperolek. Yes. I want to move. Councilman Di Piero. Yes. Mr. Frigieri. Yes. Ms. Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Mendel. Yes. Mr. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Patel. Yes. Ms. Bealy. Yes. Chairman Von Aiken. Yes. Thank you, board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. My attorney tells me he will be right back. Um, and while he does that, I will call the next application. Application number 20, colon 504, Wawa Inc. at 350 New Road, block 767, lot 29.2, preliminary and final major site plan. 
Mr. Dinsmore is back with us. I am back with you. Very good. Would you like we me to? We missed you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll wait tough. while we set up. And That's fine. Now. We're all set. Please proceed. Good evening. My name is Sarah Werner with the law firm of Prime and Tuvel, attorney for the applicant Wawa Inc. I'm sure you're all very familiar with this site, it's the existing Wawa food market and fueling station located at 350 New Road, Block 767, Lot 29.02. We are seeking preliminary and final major site plan approval tonight. Um, we are not seeking any bulk variances or design levers. What you will see um, in what I assume will be our rather quick presentation is we are simply proposing ADA improvements in order to render the site in compliance with current ADA standards. Um, as I'm sure you know, ADA standards can change over time and they have since changed since the site was originally built um, and the last time work was done to it. So I have one witness with me here tonight and I will turn it over to him momentarily. Um, but first, if I, you want to defer to your board planner, we have requested a number of um, waivers or submission waivers due to, again, the limited nature of the application. Yes, um, Mr. Chairman, the application deals with um, essentially parking lot striping, um, so there are no structural changes to the buildings or any change to use. Um, so we recommended a number of variances um, in terms of the DEP letter of interpretation. There are wetlands on a portion of the property, but it's, um, it's not in the area uh, where the pr proposed work is and it's been previously disturbed. So we recommended a waiver from that checklist item. Um, similarly, similarly with the natural features, um, waiver recommended on that given that it's been previously developed. And a series of um, waivers, which I will not labor you on, um, related to the fact that there is no change to the building itself, no change to drainage patterns, no, no increase in pervious surfaces, et cetera. Um, and then the last one, which um, is not in my memo, but the fact that they're uh, asking for final and preliminary at the same time, a waiver was sought on providing the additional items required for a final major site plan. So we would recommend those waivers as well. All right. The, the overall plan is really just changing the paint on the parking lot, is that correct? Essentially what you will hear in the, okay. in the yeah. brief testimony. Yes. All right. Very good. Um, any questions or comments from the board about the waivers? I'll accept the motion to approve the waivers as recommended. So moved, Dinsmore. Second. Second, Hernandez. All right. Roll call, please. Mr. Apparelli. Yes. Councilman DiPiero. Yes. Mr. Dinsmore. Yes. Mr. Progeri. Yes. Ms. Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Mandel. Yes. Mr. Mealy? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Ms. Vealy? Yes. Chairman Von, Von Aiken? Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, with that, I will introduce my first and only witness, Jordan Rizzo of Dynamic Engineering, um, if he could be sworn in. Raise your right hand, please. Swear the toast of the truth about the provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Would you state and spell your name for the record, please? Jordan Rizzo, R-I-C-Z-O. And would you give the board the benefit of your qualification and experience, please? I'm a graduate of Rutgers University, bachelor's of science degree in civil engineering, two schools. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the city of New Jersey. I'm a project manager at Dynamic Engineering Consultants, and I was involved in the design of this application tonight, as well as over 100 other um, ADA improvement applications for the law and developers in the city of New Jersey. Thank you. We would request at this time Mr. Rizzo be accepted as an expert in the field of civil engineering. All right. Any objections from the board? All right, Thank please you. proceed. Um, Mr. Rizzo, it looks like you have a board, and I don't know if you want to speak loudly while you orient the, the, the board with. Sure, uh, I marked this A1. It is an aerial map exhibit uh, prepared by our office, Dynamic Engineering Consultants, and it is dated 2-24-2020. Uh, the orientation of the board, the north arrow is up, and there is a new road that runs west to east, Edwards Road, which runs north to south. Would you be kind enough to mark this? Yes, I believe he marked it in the oh, top excellent. corner. Okay. So the property address is 350 New Road. 
it is block 767, lot 29.02. And this is existing Wawa convenience store number 8302 with gas operation on site. Um, and it is located in the limited industrial wholesale district too. Thank you. Um, and Mr. Rizzo, could you please walk the board through what we are proposing this evening? I believe you have what we'll mark as A2. Please note this has been marked A2 in the top left corner. Could you just provide the uh, details of the name of this plan? Sure, this is site plan rendering. It's a colorized version of the site plan sheet. Set. It is prepared by our office, Dynamic Engineering Consultants, and it is dated 224-2020. Uh, we are proposing minor improvements on site to bring the, the site into ADA compliance. The first thing that we're providing is a five foot wide access aisle next to next to the air pump which is located on the southern corner of the site it is an existing air pump and the five foot access aisle is provided uh, to allow the compliance space needed uh, between the vehicle and the air pump uh, for ada purposes which is five feet in providing this access aisle, we are reducing the number of stalls on site. Right now there's 69, but there will be 68, uh, which is 19 more than what the ordinance requires, which is 49 spaces. Uh, there was a comment in the engineering review letter about uh, how the striping will be roofed, and it will be uh, grinded down, and then the, the new paint, uh, the new striping will be painted, so the original striping won't be visible. And then there was another question regarding the lighting at the air pump. Because this is an existing stall, it was taken into consideration with the original design of the site. And the original design has 0.7 foot candles at the air pump, which is sufficient uh, with parking space and the pump. The two other improvements are both minor. We are taking an existing ADA sign at an ADA stall and raising it to 60 inches, which is the minimum height requirement for a sign. And we are also increasing one of the ADA stalls uh, from 94 inches to 96 inches, which is the minimum width of the bar. Uh, we're not proposing any variances or waivers. Uh, the impervious coverage on site is not changing. It is 61%, uh, whereas 70% is required, maximum 70%. Um, and then there's one more question in the engineering review letter about the column wraps that we're showing on the plan. Uh, we show the column wraps so that both our office and the contractor can be cognizant of the width of the future column wraps, which will be in front of the store. It's a, a stone wrapped column, which will uh, be shown in the architectural plan, and we'll uh, go into the building department for approval of that. It was really just uh, to, to visualize the size of the future column. Okay, and um, Mr. Rizzo, just to clarify, you say the building permits. Uh, is it correct that this store, along with many other Wawa's throughout the state are undergoing um, just exterior renovations just to spruce them up. That is correct. And it's at that time that the exact details of the column wraps will be presented to the building department? That's correct. Okay. And are there any other comments in either the board engineer or the board planners review letters which you feel uh, we can't comply with? I, I know there weren't many comments, but... No, in the, in the board planners letter, I just want to um, note that I'm not aware of any protective covenants. Thank you very much. Is there anything else you'd like to add? That is all I have for Mr. Rizzo, if the board has any questions or if the public. Mr. Caggiano, since he referenced your report several times, any yeah, no, he questions? Yeah, addressed the comments. Very good. Ms. Pavate? Yep. All good? Got it. Any questions or comments from the board? <coughs> all right. And I believe you said you've presented everything? We have. So okay. If the public has anything? <laughs> Uh, any questions or comments from the public? All right. Well, then I'll entertain a motion. We, got, we have so many pages. <coughs> I can make the motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I motion that, that uh, uh, we, we approve, if I have this correct. I think this is my first time. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> application number 20, colon 504. Wawa Incorporated, located at 350 New Road, Block 767, Lot 29.02, 
as a preliminary and final major site plan. Second motion, Dinsmore. All right. Let's take the roll then. <coughs> Mr. Perilic. Yes. Councilman Di Piero. Yes. Mr. Dinsmore. Yes. Mr. Frigiri. Yes. Ms. Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Mendel. Yes. Mr. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Patel. Yes. Ms. Bealy. Yes. Chairman Von Aiken. Yes. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful Excuse evening. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll take a five minute break. Uh, so at 825, we'll bring forward the next application. Uh, just so everybody can refresh themselves. All right? Yeah, I'll see you all then. Well, this is the one where we have all the material at home because we didn't bring it here. That's right. Because we've seen it. Okay. That's right. We've been given all this stuff. This is what, which one is this? Location 19 colon 517 Morse Corporate Center 6 LLC. 10120 Cherry Hill Road, Block 136, Lots 45 and 76. Preliminary and, ma and final major site plan. This was carried from January 6, 2020. Um, you know, I, I think we'd like to get started with wherever you left off, but if you wouldn't mind providing a, a brief summary of, sure. of where we left off. Uh, yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, first of all, my name is Kevin Coakley. I'm with Connell Foley in Roseland. Uh, we represent the applicant Morris Corporate Center six and you know it's uh, it's funny it's only been a month and a half ago but I needed the transcript to go back and remember what went on and maybe you have better memories than I do but um, we started off the hearing with uh, two of your your major corporate citizens here Ferring and UPS or, or their related entities and uh, they asked for more time to understand the application and so between uh, that time and and now we submitted them gave them plans and explanations and and had uh, verbal communications with uh, particularly with Bering and so uh, both both of those companies have uh, decided not, not to raise any objections to the application so uh, there, there are uh, representatives of UPS here this evening and uh, they I think that's what they would say if you wanted them to say it but and Bering, uh I don't believe is in attendance but they they also have no problem with the application. If I may, Mr. Copeland, since since they indicated that they sure. would like to provide some yeah. testimony, I, I, I would like to hear that that request yeah. is withdrawn. Uh, is that the case, gentlemen? Sure. Uh, call up front, please. One sec. Could you state your names for the record and which company you're with? Mr. Neon, M-E-I-L-L-O-N, uh, Senior Director for Building and Engineering Systems. United Parcel Service. And I am uh, Frank Teklitz, uh, T E K L I T S. I'm a facilities engineering manager for UPS Building Systems Engineering. Okay, and, and Mr. Coakley states that you have no testimony to provide, no comment to provide. Is that the case tonight? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so um, then after that, we went forward with the testimony. We had three witnesses. Um, First was Mr. Uh, uh, Joe Fleming, who was the site engineer from PSNS, and um, Mr. Fleming, I think you may recall, said he wouldn't be here today. He had his his knee replaced today, so we know he's not not going to be here. But his colleague, Mr. Uh, Cefeli, is here, um, and then we also had the testimony from Mr. Gary Dean, who was the traffic consultant, and um, and then finally Stuart Johnson, the architect. Uh, from Minnow and Waskow. So you heard those three witnesses. Um, they, the public had questions for certain of them. The board did as well. Um, but they finished up their testimony at that time. Um, frankly, we have no further testimony to present. Uh, I would think in the normal course of things, um, the uh, hearing would be open to the public at this point in time. To make any uh, comments regarding the application that they might have. All right. I guess I'll, I'll start with the board at this time, though. Uh, did any members of the board have any questions that that uh, maybe occurred to them in between the, the last meeting and today? All right. Seeing none, I will open it up to the public for questions or comments about this application. Steve. 
if you would be kind enough to speak into a microphone sure. as you speak. Uh, Tent and Margaret Collins, 60 Old Cherry Road for some. We're adjacent property owners to the uh, project. Okay, first of all, if you had a concern on the survey, can I ask you to respond to the survey? No, gentleman isn't here today. He's um, well, one of his colleagues is here. So you have are a, they under oath you have at this point? Maybe, maybe. Okay. These are not a public comment, but it ties into the existing file map. Well, definitely not a question, but, well, on, public question, but on public right. comment. I don't know, I don't swear public comment. You don't? No. Okay. Hmm. Okay. It's not testimony. Okay, you had a concern that the. The concern that the, there's. Um, the fence uh, the along our property, the fence from 1904. And Would you speak up, please? Hold on. Sir, we cannot hear you. The fence along our property adjoining Lot 44 is in total disrepair. And uh, is, is, that and fence, is that fence on on the MCC six side, or is that in? It's it, it's shared between us on the our southern uh, yeah. property. The, 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 the center of all the center of all the But the thing is, the survey the, the property lines don't tie in, so it doesn't tie into a file map. There's an older survey that was presented. Since you're making forward stuff from back in the year 2000, I see in these files, um, there was a survey further back that said that the fence was on the I need you to speak up, please. Yeah, we're not, we can't hear you. You speak so. really directly into the microphone. I'm sorry. You can even take like it out and hold it. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> um, the question about the survey. The survey uh, showed the fence on the property. Right, and the construction people were using the satellite system to put markers in. There, there were a couple of markers. Yeah, I know. Don't have any surveys. Look at you, Jimmy. You brought them. Fence online, right there. Well, this is your map. So this is, is yours? Do you know which one? Which as far as the exhibits? Do you, is your, do you have the stuff this lady? He has this. Yeah. Well, this one does show. Sure, please raise right hand, please. Do you swear the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Would you state and spell your name for the record, please? Sure, it's Mark Cifelli. It's uh, C I F is in Frank, E L L I. Perhaps answer their question for them? Sure. So I have our exhibit from the previous hearing with me. Sure. Uh, what exhibit is it you're referring to? So the aerial exhibit is A2. A2. So it's like my rendering. Okay. I just want to be clear which part I'm talking about this one. So it's at the northeast corner of the property in question. Uh, so we, we did provide a, an updated survey to the board as part of the application. It was performed in 2019. Um, we also have we also did a survey at the same time. I guess my question would be show a fence at the north edge of your property is that the one that's being referred to? No. Is it possible if you would use the microphone, please? Yeah, okay. Perhaps you could grab that microphone. I guess you don't have an easel here, huh? 
I do. You might want to set that Put it up. While he sets up, if I may, can I, can I ask what your concern about the fence is, just so I can maybe try to cut through this? Yeah, as to improvements were made um, with the UPS site mm -hmm. where the, the, the joint is lot 44, and whether or not there were any improvements to the, that property line between our properties. There's an existing fence there, and it's in total this repairs from like, you know, four. Okay, and, and so is it your concern that you don't know if it's your fence or their fence? No, I know it's their fence. It was put up by the cozy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what is your your hoping to accomplish here? Um, just bring it to their attention, hoping that um, it would be considered to be, you know, taken down and replaced. <coughs> or just how, how much fence is it? What are you talking about? It's about 300 feet. 300 feet. That's chain, chain length fence. Well, well, the original some of it's horse fence. fence. Some of it's uh, been replaced by EASF before they moved. But it's only 116 years old. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good run. Yeah. Whenever okay. a bear gets loose in the neighborhood, please chase it over our property into the woods because of that big hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I don't really like. Mr. Amari is in there. There's two ladies. Area. Yeah, you only it's for recording purposes more than broadcast. So currently we aren't proposing any improvements in that area of the property. Everything we're proposing is south of the uh, the entrance road that was constructed during the UPS's uh, development. I don't see the fence that you're speaking of shown on the survey. But it'll be, it'll be along this line, which is 275 feet. Um, I would have to discuss with the applicant that you're willing to take it down as part of the development. Would you do that, please? Sure. Yeah, I, I think it's on um, the sheet that shows the wetlands. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Plan. Yeah, we're looking at um, it's one of one, the wetland delineation. The wetlands of block 136, lots 44 and 76. You can see there's a post and wire fence. I'm going to give you that. Can you tell what property it's on? It looks, it looks like it's on the applicant's property. Okay. Benefit of, the, of having the fence. Would it be better, better to take it down if it's, if it's get it out of the way? It's probably better to have it replaced or repaired. Um, according to the interface covenant that runs with the deed from. Uh, Most of most everyone of those covenants has been released. I can tell you that. Just for, for lot 44. I know for the upper lots, for the different right. in fact, places have been released. In fact, I got the last one released about two months ago, so they were all released. Well, the one that pertains to me, and I haven't released it, uh, <laughs> item number 15 of that covenant. And what page is that on the deed book? Uh, deed book 2083. Page 111. Can you answer that? Which one is it? Item uh, 15. Read it. Would you read it for me? Party of the second part and party of the first part agree that it serves the mutual interest to cooperate in maintaining 
the high standards of the aesthetic value of premises and the property adjacent there to. No more adjacent there. Oh, we, we think we're improving the premises. I mean, yes, you are. <laughs> okay. <Thank> you. <laughs> Speaking of the microphone, again. Specificity is in regards to the fence. Go ahead. So the applicant would be willing to remove the, the fence along the property line that you're speaking of uh, as additional damage. And what about um, some proper um, markers for the corners of the property? The, the, uh, well, oh, that's oh, really not you know the yeah. <laughs> corners. You know, uh, as, yes. as the placing so markers. <laughs> yes, not yeah, concrete monuments. Yeah. Like said. Part of that. Thank you. So you remove the fence, but not replace it. Mark, right? I have some other questions. Um, yes. Let's say it's just in the course of. Microphone, please. Through, oh, sorry. There you go. There you go. All right. Through the years, with you know the different uh, projects SJP has had, we you know we're given notice uh, about uh, fresh water, environmental protection. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. For the two year renewal, I assume everything is done to meet uh, environmental standards. Yep. I'm, I'm just yep. referring back to this. Yeah, well, yeah, PS and S is there. Uh, okay. Paul Sankowski and Sartor is the engineering firm who did the flood hazard area permitting, and in connection with that, they, I, I believe, they located wetlands, etc. And oh. that's should be up to date. Okay. Hopefully it is. They had uh, also so a regional stormwater management plan. Increasing infiltration is one of the recommendations. Uh, was to this site specific? I assume that's been addressed. Yeah. Were you he were you here at the last hearing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They remember Mr. Fleming, who was he was the guy with the bum knee. Yes. Yeah. Well, he testified a lot about that, and yes, it, that is, that was his testimony. Okay, and has the height been addressed because it was previously just a 45 foot um, that was allowed? With the covenant for the increased covenant to have a height restriction on the D of 45 feet. Has that been uh, properly approved? Um, I don't recall receiving anything for variance for a residence. I think it was previously for a parking garage. Well, there was a there was a prior approval for an office building okay. that was goes back to the mid two thousand two thousand five era. Mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, I I we believe that all of the covenants that applied to the property have been released. The, the use covenants and uh, and and all the other height covenants and that sort of thing. Okay. All right. And being an adjoiner, we're not required to release. Not not if you not unless your property was specifically part of the covenants, which covenant. which Joiners. which mm, mm, you may be adjoining that that doesn't mean you're subject to the covenants. That I mean. I don't. I haven't looked at your property, but we we've, we've looked at all the properties, many properties that were subject to the covenants right, and within the, within the park, within the I'll call it the park. Right. Yes, right. Within the interface holdings, I guess that was one way to put it. Okay. The only other concern I had was I know uh, they had mentioned taking down trees. Uh, how much is going to be taken down? Is going to some of the existing trees in this island area to the south of your property. Okay. But that'll be replaced with new trees along this whole edge. And we're actually going to be raising the grade there also, so we move the buffer to your property. Okay. Um, which will, it should be a benefit to you. Okay. 
Now, when UPS was uh, built, the uh, Morris Corporate Center was going to be doing landings all along Upper Pond Road that, because that was part of the project. They required UPS to put in the access driveway all through there. I don't know if that planting, uh, which was on the UPS site plans for Upper Pond Road, is going to be incorporated with this new build at 40, Lot 44. So, any of the plantings that were put in with the construction of this road for UPS would remain. Um, they were closer along the frontage of the road. And, uh, You're talking about road. existing plantings. Uh, well, some of them weren't put in. That were Designated on the plans for UPS. That that wouldn't be the um, designation for for this applicant though. That would be UPS. Are you doing any landscaping at all to the north and east of the road? We are not. So that all of the landscape that is there now will remain? Yes. If only to the south of the road will be replaced with and there more than is, that is there now. There's a drainage ditch that for overflow of the uh, um, water at the uh, to the rear of our property that runs along the border line between Meadowbrook Garden Apartments, that red line. Yes. Right in there between the road and that red line, there's a. Uh, uh, so it's a wetlands ditch. Yeah. And so it captures runoff. And it, there's parking that's going to extend into wetlands that they're going to fill in? No. That's been, no, because on a, a previous report, they said there was 3,000 square foot of wetland that was going to be filled in for a parking lot. Uh, the wetlands line was previously approved under the UPS application for more square foot six was. Um, in what in year? 2017 or something. Um, and this, the proposed development is completely outside of the yeah, conservation system point. that was yeah. put in place during that application. Thank you. So we have no plans. We're actually increasing the buffer Any other comments from the public at this time? <clears throat> okay. Seeing no one come forward, I'll accept the motion. I just had a, a quick question. Um, I just want to make sure it's not lost because I, I believe that there was some discussion at the last planning board meeting about um, outdoor recreation and a couple members were interested in recreation that was more applicable to adolescents than the top lot i think a basketball court was mentioned as a possibility to, did right you, we we did looked you all at go back and look at that we looked at the, at at that and the, the problem with with doing that on this site or the, the existing grades and may, maybe you can uh elaborate on that mr spelling so our, one of our goals was to minimize the disturbance on the property there are significant steep slopes mm -hmm. in all areas of the site surrounding the development area. So we were not looking to impact that. Uh, and then within the areas that we are clearing, there's still slopes just to catch up the grades and the retaining walls. There's really not a large flat area for yep. a safe basketball area. Um, and the flattest area is also in the front yard, <coughs> which would be desirable for a court. Thanks. I just want to close the loop. You have found the spot for the top lot, however? Yes. Yeah. yeah the, the top lot's a little smaller, and we can fit it closer to the parking areas. Mm -hmm. and it'll be safe for all the, the users. Okay. All right. Um, I think in some guidance that I should allow you to summarize. All right. Well, uh, I think uh, we, we presented a, a case. There are no variances. Uh, it is uh, conforms to the zone. And we asked the board to uh, consider granting preliminary and final uh, site plan approval without variances. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any any questions or comments from the board? Deliberation. 
All right, seeing none, I'll accept. Uh, oh, I'm losing my head right now. Actually, Please. before we, we go on, are there any any yeah. items that we asked them to? Is yeah. there a list? Well, no, that's just I don't believe there were, but I'm so, Mr. Coakley, I'm saying, and board members, I'm somewhat embarrassed. I was horrified today to open up my MCCC Corporate Center 6 document to find it blank. So, um, Mr. Coakley, I'm going to ask that we, uh, that it's subject to any conditions agreed <coughs> upon during testimony. I'll go through the transcript. Right. I, I understand, yes. Subject to the testimony, yes. yes. Yeah, there were a number of... Uh, of I mean, uh, tonight we have the fence. We know that. The, the, yeah. the fence will be removed. Right. There are a number of, of matters set forth in the review letters, many of which we agreed to. Sure. We have um, a standard set of conditions so, that you right. comply with the various review letters, right. et cetera. I, um, I believe you agreed to two charging, electric vehicle charging spaces in the last meeting. Yes, that'll show up in the transcript right. as well. It was two per lot. Two per building. I'm sorry. Two per building. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Dinsmore, did that satisfy your that concern? That satisfies me, and okay. I'd be happy to move that subject to the agreed upon conditions, conditions <laughs> that this board <laughs> approves application number 19 colon 517 Morris Corporate Center VI LLC. 10120 Cherry Hill Road, Block 136, Lots 44 and 76. That we move that we grant preliminary and final major site plan. Second, second. Mealy. All right, we have a second. Yes, Mealy. All right. Let's call the roll. Mr. Raparelli. Yes. Councilman Di Piero. Yes. Mr. Dinsmore. Yes. Mr. Frigieri. Yes. Ms. Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Mandel. Yes. Mr. Mealy. Yes. Ms. Vealy. Yes. Chairman Von Aiken. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. all your courtesies. All right. Yeah. That no. concludes our agenda. We have a motion to conclude our meeting. To adjourn. Second for Jerry. Uh, somebody needs to make a motion. I'll make, I'll make <laughs> First, all right. The second. Motion made by Hernandez, second for Jerry. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, Scott, I'm going to get you the yes. language on the